In this tutorial series, we're going to explore a little bit more working with uh, After Effects timeline and its uh, layers panel. Now you can see down here the layers panel and the timeline are both empty, uh, and that's because we're working in a brand new project, and this project currently doesn't have any compositions associated with it. So let's go up to the Composition drop-down uh, menu, select New Composition, and we're going to uh, leave this at 720 by 480. That is the NTSDV standard preset. And we're going to make sure that our pixel aspect ratio is set to square pixels. We're going to leave the frame rate at 29.97. That should be the default. If you don't have that currently, you can just click on these presets down here. We're going to leave the resolution as full. And our duration, I currently have this set to 15 seconds and zero frames. Uh, you can set it to 10 seconds. Uh, we're going to just do a quick little exercise and it won't take more than 10 seconds uh, for our timeline. So you can just leave it at that. Um, and my background color is currently set to black. Uh, if you'd like to set it to something else, you can just by clicking on that swatch. I'm just going to leave it at that and I'm going to say OK. Now there is our composition. You can see that uh, we now have uh, something to look at, but we still have nothing in our layers panel down here, so we need to create something. Let's go up to our layers drop down menu, and we're going to select new. And you can see we have a bunch of different uh, types of layers we can put in there, but the one we want is this one here, shape layer. And currently, we have a shape layer. You can see it's down here in our timeline or in our uh, timeline panel or layer layer panel. Since they are conjoined, this layer panel and timeline panel, I sometimes refer to them as layer panel or timeline panel. But you can see here we have this one layer, but we don't have anything associated with that layer here on the stage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up here to the top left and choose my shape tool, and I'm just going to choose a rectangle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle right in the center of my stage like this. And I'm going to hold down the shift button so I get a perfect rectangle, and I'm just going to let go. There we go. We now have a shape associated with that shape layer. You can sort of see this here because we can see that, in fact, if I twirl down this uh, disclosure triangle, we can see we have something called contents, and there is something called rectangle one, and oh my goodness, there's a bunch of properties associated with that. We're not going to get involved with these properties right now. Uh, we'll do that in a later tutorial. But right now, what I'd like you to look at is these transform properties twirl those down. Now we saw these transform properties in the last uh, tutorial series. I call them the cardinal properties. There are many more different properties that we can animate, but these five are essentially the main uh, principal um, ones that most people uh, start using, at least to begin with anyway. What I want to do with this animation is I'd like to have this square move from the left-hand side of the screen over to the right-hand side of the screen. Now you're going to say, well, we've already done something much more complex, but what we're going to do with this series of videos is we're going to explore how we can get something to move from one place to another. Some people call them tweens, but some people call it interpolation, but how something gets from one place to another can really vary, and we have all sorts of controls here in After Effects, and that's what we're going to look at in this series. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to bring this square from this center position over here to the left. I'm going to click on my selection tool, and I'm going to click, and I'm going to drag this over. Okay. Now when I click off that, now if I select that shape again, now you can see hey, there's something that has changed here. Look at this center point here. This is the anchor point. Now even though I created this shape and moved it over here, the anchor point remained at the center of my composition. Now that'll be an issue for us. So let's make sure that we, whenever we create a new shape or a new object on our, or bring a new uh, um, uh, item onto our stage or into our uh, viewer here, that we make sure that the anchor point is set where we want it to be set. And like I said, this center point of the animation of this uh, anchor point here is something I'm going to want to change right away. I do that by coming up here to this tool right here. It's called the Pan Behind Anchor Point tool. And it does a couple different functions, but in this case, we are going to just use that tool, select that anchor point, and we're going to re reposition it roughly center in our square. We want to make sure we do this right away because, um, well, if we start animating and then we move the anchor point, that will cause us all sorts of problems. So let's make sure that we've done that. Okay, we have done that, and now we're ready to start animating. Now, animating is essentially a three step process process. We need to, the very first thing we need to do is we need to determine what property we're going to change. Well, of course, we're changing this position property, aren't we? We're going from the left 
to the right. So let's come down here to our transform, our cardinal uh, properties down here, and sure enough, we can see we have a position property that we can animate. We know we can animate it because we see a little stopwatch here. Whenever you see a stopwatch beside a property in After Effects, that means you can animate it. But before we do anything with that, I want to make sure that our timeline indicator, this yellow thing with the red line, um, is at the very beginning of our timeline. I'm just going to drag it to the left as far as it'll go. You can see we are, in fact, at the zero point um, right at the beginning of our timeline. So step number one in creating an animation is create a keyframe. Now, we create a keyframe in After Effects by just clicking on that stopwatch. We're basically telling After Effects that, okay, keep track of this property because it's going to change over time. So that was step one, and you can see we have a little triangle here, or a little uh, diamond here at the beginning of our timeline. Step number two in creating an animation is to drag out your current time indicator to a, a point on the timeline at which you want this animation to end. And I'm just going to bring mine to the three second mark, you can see right here. Um, if you have a hard time uh, getting your current time indicator exactly where you want it, you can see here I'm at two seconds and 29 frames, I can hold down the command button and the right arrow and advance it one frame. There I am, I'm at three seconds, zero frames. So that was step number two. Remember, step number one was create an initial keyframe. Step number two was to move your current time indicator along the timeline to another point. Finally, what we want to do is we want to actually change the position of this um, uh, object. Now, I currently still have the um, anchor point tool selected. I want to change that. I want to select our actual selection tool. Come up here to the left, select the arrow or hit V on your keyboard. And now watch what happens when I move this object over to the right. You'll see that that keyframe is automatically created. And there we go. And if I scrub the timeline, meaning I just click on that current time indicator and bring it back to the beginning of my timeline, you can see that we have an animation. In fact, let's just play this animation back. I'm going to come over here to my right, and you can see I have a panel here called Preview. Currently, it's kind of hidden, so I'm just going to click it once, or click it twice to reveal it. Actually, I'm going to have to click in between these two panels and make some more room for that Preview panel. Here we go. I'm just going to leave that like so. And let's just click on this Play button here, and you'll see that our animation will play. Oh, let's bring that current time indicator at the beginning to the beginning of my timeline, and you can see there is my oh, boring animation. Now, of course it's boring because we are having something move from one side of the screen to the other side of the screen in what's called linear motion. It means it doesn't change from frame to frame all the way through those three seconds. That um, uh, object never changes its rate of speed. Now, what I want to do is I want to change this second keyframe. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to select it. And I'm going to hold down my control um, button, and I'm just going to click on that um, keyframe, and I'm going to select from my uh, contextual message window here, keyframe assistant, easy ease in, because that is how this is. Um, that is how this square is going to be moving into that final resting point. Now I don't know if you can see here on the screen, but there has been a change in the way these dots are depicted along the motion path. Each one of these dots represents the position of the anchor point at that frame along that animation. And you can see that they're starting to get a little bit closer together as it moves in to that final resting point. And that's called easing in. And if I play this back, you can see, well, you'll see generally how this works. The, it'll start quickly and then just slowly move into place. Oh, that's called easing in. Okay, well, let's do something. I'm going to twirl up my um, disclosure triangle for this shape layer, and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to select this once, and I'm going to hit Command D on my keyboard, Command D on a Mac, and I'm going to duplicate it. You can see now we have this, this shape layer duplicated. We have shape layer one, shape layer two. They're currently sitting right on top of each other, so we really can't see what's happening. What I'd like to be able to do is I want to position this square right underneath this animation as it's going across here, because we're going to create a new square that's moving across our stage. And how we do that is I want to reveal the position property at uh, keyframes for this shape layer 2 object. Now how I do that is very simple. I need to reveal its position property. I could do it this way by twirling down that disclosure triangle, 
And then underneath the transform properties, I can see that, uh, yes, there's the position property. And there, in fact, are the two keyframes that I'm going to have to reposition. However, there is an easier way for us to do this. And this is very important. I want you to select this shape layer 2. And I, I want you to twirl up the uh, disclosure triangle so it's just looking like this. And now I want you to hit the U button on your keyboard just once. Ah, just by hitting that U key, you can see that now rather than having to twirl down through all those different properties, we only have to look at the property that has had keyframes applied to it. That's what the U key does. The U key, also called the Uber key, basically just shows you the properties that have been changed. And this is quite useful because we don't want to have to search through all these different properties to find the one that you've made changes to. You would like to be able to see it at once, and that's all you have to do is just click U on your keyboard. Now with those two keyframes exposed, I'm just going to, with my selection tool, I'm just going to drag a marquee around both of those keyframes. And you can see what's happened up here. We can see that our object is now selected, and we have a solid dot on either end of our, of our motion path, meaning that both those keyframes are both selected. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the down arrow on my keyboard and move both of those keyframes down. If I hold down the shift button as I do it, I can get larger increments, so I can just move that to about there. And now as I scrub my timeline, you can see that both of these uh, squares are easing into their final resting spot. But let's do something. Let's change the uh, easing property on this second object. Rather than have it ease in to its final resting point, let's have it ease out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first keyframe because we want it to ease out from this beginning point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that first keyframe, make sure I don't move it, and I'm going to hold down the control button. Again, I'm going to get this contextual message window. I'm going to go down to keyframe assistant, and this time I'm going to go to easy ease out. And now you can see, again, that our dots along our motion path have changed. Now they're bunched more towards the left. Watch what happens as I scrub through the timeline. Now that first initial keyframe, or that first square, is moving quickly and then slows down whereas our first one starts slowly and speeds up. Now you can see that we didn't change the value for this second keyframe, so it's easing in to that final resting spot. So it's basically ending at exactly the same time. But you can see that this has changed the characteristic of that motion. Now when something is moving naturally, of course, if it has some inertia to it, and every object does, it's going to start off slowly like this second square, and then pick up speed, and as it comes down to its resting spot, it's going to slow into its final resting spot. That is a much more natural motion, and if I play this back, and again, this motion here that we're seeing expressed by the second um, square is a much more natural motion. Now, we can build much more easing into this, and we'll talk about that in our next video.